Yesterday, we discussed what Ryan Day must do for Ohio State to beat Michigan. Today, it's about McCord, Harrison Jr., and Trevion Henderson, and what that three-headed monster must do for Ohio State to beat the Michigan Wolverines. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to the episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Tuesday, November 21st in the year 2023. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locks on college terms and conditions apply the everydayers those of you that have been around for any big game since i've been the host of this show know there are some familiar voices and faces on the youtube that you might see during that week's shows and this week is that week you got me yesterday but today i'm not writing solo here with me running the entire length of the show it's my guy our guy jeff hunt he is back jeff you went to the game on Saturday. We're all looking forward to the game this coming Saturday, but we're all happy you're back for this show today to talk about three really talented football players. Hey, it's great to be back, man. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. This is a special week for me. It always has been. Um, it's uneasy. It's tense. It's exciting. Uh, it's hard to stay focused on anything but the game coming up, and that's in a normal year. This is this is a special. This is a special edition of the rivalry. This is basically this is a the last of you know this this I don't know maybe a hundred years worth of this next year. The Big Ten changes. Um, you know, 12 teams in the playoffs there. It, it's not that there'll ever not be as much at stake, but it's hard to get bigger than undefeated versus undefeated with a, a very good chance to make the playoffs. Like it's just, it, things are kind of, I don't know my, my, my just the, the hair standing up, you know, on, on my neck and arms, just constantly just thinking about it, man. It's, it's, it's go time. Man, we live for this. I mean, we were made for this, yes. not made for the nerves that come to, <laughs> play when Ohio State's lost the last two, but we were made for this week. Ohio State, Michigan, yes, the intensity goes even higher than it already is when it's 11-0 and versus 11-0. and But like I said the other day, Jeff, I think it was on yesterday's show, records mean nothing. Playoff implications don't, don't matter. They do, but they don't. The chance to win a Big Ten championship next week? No. This is all about bragging rights. And yep. the fact that over the past two years, Michigan has won the game should annoy every Ohio State player, every Ohio State coach, the scouts, the support staff, whoever. Why? Because one loss isn't isn't shouldn't happen. Two in a row, it's unexpected, not allowed, and losing three in a row potentially. Not saying if they're going to lose or not, but potentially losing three in a row because that could be reality. That shouldn't fly either. Yeah, here's what I would tell your young fans and listeners, and they haven't been through, you know, as many, quite as many as I have. I'm on, you know, I'm on year 48 of this rivalry. <laughs> um, this, you're, I think you understand now exactly what what we mean when we talk about like the, the nerves, the 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 disdain between the two yeah. teams. You know, yeah. everything that's going into this year. If you don't, if you don't understand what this rivalry is about now, you you probably never will. Jeff, when I think about this rivalry, and we unfortunately had a quarterback over the past couple of years who Stroud, phenomenal throw over the football, but as QB1 never led the Buckeyes to a victory in that game, quarterbacks are viewed. Did you beat Michigan or did yep. you lose to Michigan? That's how you're viewed. That's how you're graded. And for Kyle McCord this weekend, the biggest game of his life, if he thought going to Notre Dame week four <laughs> was a big deal or Penn State coming to the shoe, in October was a big deal. Buddy, this is even bigger when you're QB1. This is how we grade the quarterback. Fair or unfair doesn't matter. It's just what yeah. we do. And for Kyle McCord, Jeff, I wonder, I'm going to ask you this question before I even answer it. Do you think Kyle McCord is ready for Michigan on Saturday? I, I, 
I, I I do think he's ready. Now that's not to that's not to tell everyone that I don't see what you see, and then I don't see some of the limitations and some of the young growing pains. But I, he does seem like a guy because of Notre Dame, because of what we saw in Penn State, because of some of the other couple of the other clunky games that he didn't. He didn't implode and make big mistakes. He didn't have to get yanked. Um, you know, he stuck with it, stuck with the plan and, and pulled them all out. He's an 11 and no quarterback with yeah. pretty good stats, pretty yeah. good stats. This, this offense was ran a little different this year. He's not fields or Stroud. You know, we know that I think most importantly, I believe Kyle McCord is comfortable with who he is, whether that aggravates Buckeye fans, whether they're judging him against some of the greats doesn't matter. McCord knows who he is. He knows what he can do. Because every now when he when he's confident and makes some of the throws that you know that he knows he can make, it looks fantastic. Um, so I do think he's ready. Now that is to say, you know, can he overcome you know the Michigan defense and 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 the pressure going to put on and the weather and the fans and the sounds and, and the pressure and all that? That's different. But I I do think that he's as as, as ready as can be. He hasn't he has not looked rattled to me this year. And I real and I I believe that's genuine. You know, I believe he's ready. Um, and I'm not just saying like mentality. He's saying, oh, I'm ready for the Wolverines. No, I'm not yeah. going that far. I think the football player, Kyle McCord, is ready for what Michigan is going to throw at him. Yeah. Because I think about McCord, Penn State, really good defense. Notre Dame, at the time, secondary was one that I'm like, wow, these guys are future NFL football players. Really good defense. Wisconsin on the road. Defense might not be as good as Michigan's or Penn State's or Notre Dame's, but still a really good defense who has yeah. a defensive-minded coach. And we saw what happened there in Madison, Wisconsin. We've also seen earlier this year against a Western Kentucky team that once the Buckeyes just said enough is enough, the score kept going up and the margin yeah. started getting a lot wider. We have seen the good. We have seen some bad. We have seen some growing pains. I think Kyle McCord's ready. And I'm not just saying mentally. I think the football player McCord yeah. is ready for this test, but it is a test, Jeff, and a cool. test this week, knowing that, yes, you know the holiday is coming. It's on the schedule. It's been that way for a while. You know that Thanksgiving's coming on Thursday. You're going to have maybe some time off with family, or maybe the, I don't know if the, the team schedule. I don't know if they eat together at one point. Then say, hey, family time as well. I don't know the schedule. But all of those things can throw you off as a football player because it throws you off your routine. But I think Kyle McCord is ready to step up to the challenge. But the one other thought I have about Kyle McCord is in this big game, in that big stadium, will the noise and the pressure, even though I think he's going to be, he's ready for it, will it be too much? Jeff, that's a question that I have because that's one thing we don't know until the game is played. And the biggest thing is it's honestly like, you know, physically, because yep. here's what's going to happen. You are going to get hit. You are going to get sacked. You are going to get knocked down. You are going to get a ball batted. Can you get up, forget about it, not not try to get it all back at once if you get a sack, not try to make, not try to force a ball in there when it's not time to. If it becomes time to force it in, he's he's shown that he can do that. But can you can you get up, you know, dust your pants off, go back to the huddle? And, and understand it's going to happen again. It's going to be cold turf. It's going to be nasty. Um, you know, I assume he played in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. You know, this isn't a kid that is going to be overwhelmed by the by the weather. And you know, that's the thing. And, and and like again, so far he has not done anything to make me think that he's going to be shattered. But we two years ago we saw what happened to Stroud. Um, you know, when it hit the fan, like it, it was a tough game for him, and he tried to fight through it, but it was just it overcame him a little bit. Uh, McCord has got to be aware of that. Um, I think I think having that defense behind him gives, is going to give him a lot of reassurance, a lot of confidence to not you know think he has to throw his way out of it. I don't really think he can throw his way out of the game. I don't think that's a uh, I don't think that's a way that Ohio State can win this. I think the way they I think the way McCord doing his part will be take the throws in front of you, take every yard they'll give you, cherish the football. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? If they'll give you four yards twenty times in a row. Take it. Yeah. Uh, don't force it until it's time to force it. Trust your receivers. Um, you know, trust your looks, trust your training. And and it I you it, it can happen. It can happen. One thing that I love about Jeff is that he's very insightful. We agree, but also explain our thoughts in different ways, which is why I'm curious to hear Jeff's thoughts on Marvin Harrison Jr. And if we're about to embark upon his Heisman moment, that's coming at you next on Locked on Buckeyes. 
This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. So these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's free and easy to create a job post on LinkedIn Jobs. Once you create your job post, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Jeff Marvin Harrison Jr. He is a guy that could win the Heisman this year. We hear all the time. Yeah, you need to be a special player to win the Heisman. You've got to be on a special team to win the Heisman. But also, you kind of need that Heisman moment. And a road game against your rival, 11-0 versus 11-0, probably number two Ohio State versus number three Michigan. The rankings are there. Chance to go to the Big Ten Championship game next week. The stage is set. Do you think Marvin Harrison Jr. will rise to the occasion against Michigan? I do think he will rise to the occasion. Um, what Marv's going to have to do this weekend is he's going to have to understand that, you know, and that he might play, you know, whatever, say 45, 50 plays. Four of them might matter. But yeah. he has to, he has to, and he will. He The, the, the thing about Harrison, I want to be clear that he has done this all year. Yes. Like he, he, uh, he knows like, that not not that he's ever a decoy, but he has to run every route, every play, block every play, everything he needs to do. He needs to do it 100% every play to drag that attention, if nothing else. If you told me, you know, that Egbuka is going to have 100 yards and two touchdowns, I might believe you because of what Harrison can draw. And uh, he's willing to do that. It could be weird. I personally think he's going to have a big, you know, stat game like he always does. He, he shows up, you know, it would not surprise me at all. But I would also believe that, that he would help them win in other ways. And then when we look back, you know, unselfishly being like, man, what a great game, you know, Marvin played with, with 50 yards receiving or something like that. Like he's, he has done nothing to show me that he's not ready for prime time. Uh, it, seems, it seems like the kid's born for this game, to be honest with you. And I, I really, I really think he's going to show up. And I think he's just, we just talked about McCord. He's, that's going to help him. Having a receiver like Harrison helps a quarterback so much. It'd be ridiculous not to say that. But also just on the field, the way they move him around, I think it's going to be a lot like Penn State. They're yeah. going to have him in a lot of different positions, a yeah. lot of motion, a lot of drag routes. Stover's going to work his butt off to get Marv open. Um, and then Marv might be working his butt off to get Egbuka open. Like these, these are the 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 plays against good defenses that High State has thrived on have been group efforts. Um, yes. And I know we all see it, but if you go back and watch the tape, especially Stover, some of the stuff that he's done has really, really you know opened a lot of things up for Marv, and vice versa. So that that's what I expect. I expect a you know four quarter, hundred percent effort, and when the chance comes, he will show up and. And and make the play. As far as the Heisman, there's a there's a young man down in Louisiana <laughs> that I don't think we can overcome right now. That's having right. the one fascinating year. But as far as like what Marvin's done, he's going to be on the podium. He's going to win the Blitnikoff. Um, you know, he's he's going to go everywhere in the draft. He he's really been everything that we dreamed. You know, that he would be when he went to Ohio State. It's it's been a pleasure to watch him. And I'll generally he's one of the players that I'll generally miss um, when he's gone next year. Jeff, you know that Heisman moment conversation is one that I feel is fitting for the game, but yeah. he doesn't have to have a Heisman moment for the Buckeyes to win the game. I think about when it comes to Harrison Jr., the receiver, the all-around player, he carries himself at times on the field a lot like his dad. All business, no yeah. play, just out there doing his job. And the one thing I see him do that – he, now, the Colts didn't do this with his dad, probably could have, but they decided that Mar Peyton Manning wanted to run his offense one way, hit Marvin Harrison on the on one side, yeah. Reggie Wayne on the other, and they didn't crisscross. They didn't go. They didn't what go a, what a duo, by the way. What a duo. <laughs> we should all be so lucky to have Harrison and Wayne on the same right. field. Wow. Right. 
<laughs> then you add in Dallas Clark to Iowa Hawkeye. Oh Man, that was just oh that, that was wild. Fun times to watch the Colts back then. Wish they were back to those days, but that's another story for another show. Go to Lock on Colts to hear the Colts break down that they do on a daily basis. But for Harrison Jr., though, I do think he's ready. But also the thing about this, and I I want to say the last name escapes me. I forget. I think it's Sandstrill, Mike Sandstrill, the corner from Michigan. You got Will Johnson, the other corner. Those are two guys that are really, really good. Yep. But Harrison Jr. has found a way that against the best of the best on the other team, best of the best in the Big Ten, or even against Georgia a year ago, hey, he knows how to – overcome any counter that they have to any move Harrison Jr. has. So, yeah, the Heisman moment's one thing. He doesn't need a Heisman moment for the Buckeyes to win the game. I'm not looking for 10 catches and 200-plus yards. I'm not looking for that. But probably somewhere between about seven, eight catches, 120, 130 yards, couple touchdowns. I think that's what they need from him. And, Jeff, also, I believe he can provide that on Saturday. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, he's but he's not. Yeah, he's not only just like a big time player and all the hype. He's a technician. Yes, um, and like you said, he understands his role. The offense really works well with him. And like as opposed to like Penn State, he's got Igbuka uh, that looks healthy right now, which is which is huge. He's got you know Henderson in the backfield, which you know looks way healthier than Mars played with all season. Like these are things that free him up. Uh, like I said, I already touched on what Stover will do for him. Um, you know, he'll lay it all out there. Cade, Cade Stover could be the player of the game and have one catch uh, because of the stuff that he does in that offense, you know, at, from that tight end position. And Harrison's the same way. Um, yeah. But if you told me that, like, like, okay, it's go time, it's all Marv and, until, you know what I mean, we're going to go with it until it, it doesn't work, I absolutely believe that that's a possibility, whether it's, you know, pass interference, whether it's, you know, big catches, whether it's, you know, runs. I mean, we've seen him score on runs. I mean, he's he's a little quicker than than you would think. He yeah. actually – Harrison's at, so athletic that you forget that he's 6'4". That's a big <laughs> – that's a big young man like out six, there. He's like 6'4", 210, 215. Yeah, but when he's out he there doesn't running – He does look like that on TV, he, he but doesn't. I know people in person say, no, he's definitely – He's a – He's, he's a, definitely in really good football, yeah, so, football And that's shape. huge. The, the yes. size, you know, the size is a big – people compare him and neighbors down, you know, in LSU, and I get uh -huh. the comparisons. The difference is four inches of height, which, yes. you know, I mean – the, the, but Marv's going to be ready. He's he's angry. He's ready. There, you you said at the beginning of the show. There is there is nothing. No mo more motivation this team needs. They don't need if they're not angry enough. If they're not what they really what they need to be is focused. Yeah. And Marv has proven that he can focus. You know, for sixty minutes, and I think that helps McCord focus for sixty minutes. Jeff, I got one thing before we go to Henderson. Henderson in the very next segment. Early this year, the offensive line was a topic because. The, Many people said they weren't playing well. Yeah. Growing pains. I highlighted in the preseason, you had two new starters, three, I mean, excuse me, three new starters, um, two guys that were on the team last year. One guy was a transfer from San Diego State. They were they had some issues. Over the past few weeks, really over the past six, six games, six, eight games, yeah. the offensive lines played a whole lot better. And then I think their one goal, I don't, I'm not saying you don't give up a sack. Like a sack's probably going to happen. Yeah. Because Michigan's really good. But they have a belief that I have in them that make me believe this could be their best game all year. And I know Josh Fryer has his issues, has his strengths, has his weaknesses. Simmons, same thing. The other three guys are saying they have their strengths, they have their weaknesses. But for some reason, I think this Saturday could be their best game of the year. Not, not just because they need it, but because I think that they have grown – so much this year that this is where you show everybody how good you are the final game of the regular season yeah i totally with you we and we touched on this everybody can go back and check out me and jay when we did the uh, mid-season report yeah. card when we talked about the offensive line i distinctly remember saying i think they're coming together i you think did. they're i think they came into the season a little thick because of the the breakdown of the season that that's a common thing for offensive linemen to do they're a little lethargic early on but, so they're ready for that november run so they're ready for the penn states and the michigans i went back and i was watching you know the film today 
this the offensive line was moving faster than it was week yes. three or week four. Um, you know, th they're getting around the corner a little faster. They're working and you know, they're they're getting off the ball. Everything's a little quicker. Yes. And again, we we also discussed it. There's a big men. Uh, you know, yeah. Ohio State, they, they, that's the type of offensive line they want. They want to put that wall up there, and they can still make that wall from record. And it's been it's been pretty good. The I really went and looked at a lot of stuff of what's going on between the offensive line and the cord. Like they're both taking so much heat and you know how critical I am Jay, but when you really go back and look like some of the pass percentage stuff with McCord. So something McCord does is he'll like basically just throw the ball over a guy's head when it's not there. And that go, that makes his, I think a lot of people honestly mistake that for a bad throw as opposed to, I think that's how McCord gets rid of the ball. I just doesn't think, I don't think it looks as obvious. If you really go back and look, I mean, I know it sounds crazy. And also with the sacks, we talked about that, like early in the year, the sacks, a lot of them were coming because McCord was in the wrong position. The offensive line actually held up pretty well. I think, so I think a lot of that stuff that we nitpicked and complained about really wasn't as bad as we thought and they were building to this moment and i totally agree the offensive line in the last two or three weeks has looked really good um and i think they're i think they're at the right physicality for november football i think they're at the right weight like i said again i say it has no you know no disadvantages going into this they need to go up there and get the job done there's there's no there's no excuses at this point Ohio State needs to go up there and get the job done there's one guy in Trevion Henderson <laughs> who is healthy who I believe I believe that he will go up there and get the job done why do I believe that we'll discuss that next on Locked on Buckeyes this episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is the most fun I've had, winning up to 25 times my money this foot. Ball season, quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Price Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25%. To provide even more value, go to pricepicks.com slash locked on couch and use code locked on couch for your first deposit match up to $100. Price picks daily fantasy sports made easy. This episode is brought to you by Billiards Plus. The Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. And did you know Billiards Plus has? top-of-the-line grills with up to 30-year warranties that's longer than most roofs. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Alhausen, Canada, Billiards, and more. Plus, top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis Sandler Griddle that could very well be the last grill you own. The perfect gift for any occasion is in stock at Billiards Plus. Go big! with an awesome pool table or shuffleboard table, or a little more modest with a dartboard or poker table. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. And the people at Billiards Plus are the best part of the experience. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will take amazing care of you. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Jeff, I didn't plan to go O line at the end of that last segment. I'm glad you did that. to Henderson right now, but they go hand in hand. Henderson yep. can't do anything successful if those guys up front don't do their job yep. consistently over and over and over. And as the offensive line has gotten better and better and better, Henderson all of a sudden is healthy. And I believe this is the version of Henderson that Ohio State recruited and believed they would get at some point during his career at Ohio State. Yes, freshman year is one thing, but Jeff, I don't think we got this version of Henderson back there at his freshman year. It was a lot of explosive outside. I'm I'm faster than you. I have this yeah. cut. Like his jump cut's filthy. Like if he his jump cut, if he is uh, at the right time, he's gone. But the offensive line and Henderson go hand in hand. And if Henderson wants to have the day that he needs to have for Ohio State to win, the offensive line, Jeff, 
also needs to do their job. Before I turn it over to you, I need to make this statement. I believe, and I'm making an odd statement because I haven't been a Henderson believer for most of his career. Yeah. Jeff, I believe in the old line, and I believe in number 32, Treviata Henderson. I do too. It's looked great the last few weeks. Again, I go back and watch the film. Here's what he's doing. We we talked about this again. Like like I'm not I'm not sitting here telling you me and Jay, you know Jay saw this season playing out like it is, but there's just a few things that we've really nailed it, and that's what we said about Henderson. We need to get him healthy. We need to get him to quit thinking. And then when I say we, like we just like in general, <laughs> right, I, I don't right. want to. He's done all the work. Henderson's Correct. the reason this is happening. Correct. But he's confident. He's hitting the hole. And the one thing he's doing and he has to do, he's planting the outside foot and he's cutting up field and he's getting that extra, you know, it's usually an extra four, but it can yes. become an extra 40. Yeah. Uh, he, he's not bouncing it outside like he was. And everybody told me it was because of the injury. I, I might believe that now. I really might. Um, you know, whether he's grown as a back and, and, developed into the back that he's become or whether it's because he feels comfortable planting you know on on the ankles again i, I don't know what it is but when he when he plant puts that foot in the ground and cuts up field it's like okay now we got something and now you're scaring a defense and he's you know he's 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 getting really narrow through the holes like he, he doesn't take much of a hole right now he's really running really narrow and, that, and that's awesome for a running back uh he's hard to hit he's not getting a lot of ankle tackles he's getting through a lot of those uh, he's getting his knees moving. I mean, he just he, – yeah, you're exactly right. He – at this moment, we couldn't ask for anything more than he looks like the running back that we were told we were getting and that we saw early in that freshman year. And 100% he's he's the difference. He takes such a load off of McCord and such a load off of Harrison and all these guys. And with the way this – you know, we got to remember too, the way this wide receiver crew can block for the last decade is such a huge advantage. If he can just slip through a couple times – you can really get something done, you know, on this Buckeyes team. I've been been really happy with like how hard he's obviously worked to come back from the injuries, and I, you know, I've definitely been hard on him, but it it looks good. Uh, he looks light. He looks quick. Um, you know, he's he's really you know, he looks like one. He definitely looks like one of the best running backs in the country as we speak, and um, that's a huge, you know, that's, that's a huge positive to go into this week with. Jeff, I ran some numbers by you earlier today before we started running the show, but I want to go over something here really quickly about Michigan's defense. And I understand the schedule has not been the strongest, buddy, I don't care. They're playing a Big Ten schedule. They had to play Rutgers. Who, but I add, I have mad respect for Greg Schiano because I did not expect that this Rutgers no. team to play like this this year. They had to play Rutgers, had to play Penn State. Yeah, the non-conference was whack. Like, that's definitely a conversation to have and to make a statement like, oh, their non-conference schedule was whack. But Michigan, no matter who you're playing, 11 games, only giving up nine yards per game. They're only giving up 144.8 passing yards per game. But this is a number that got me more than even the 234.8 yards are giving up total as a defense. They're only giving up 90.0 rushing yards per <laughs> game and to me jeff i do think henderson could eclipse that average that they have and easily have between 100 to 125 rushing yards and one touchdown i don't want to say like that's what he needs for them to get there but ryan day has showed us something that i didn't think he would show us about henderson it's a belief that hey for the past few years, we have used multiple running backs. No matter if it's Mayan Williams and Travion Henderson, or even J.K. Dobbins, I think it was Master Teague one year that they, that I think was 2019, or Master Teague and Trey Sermon. Ryan Day is saying number 32 is my guy. Chip Trainer may get a couple carries, but number 32 is the guy that's going to get the ball, which is why I went into 100 to 125 rushing yards, one touchdown. I think those are realistic numbers and numbers that if he gets those, Ohio State has a realistic shot to win the game. But, Jeff, the reason why I believe that, and you touched on it a little bit with him um, planting and cutting inside and maybe having a little bit more faith in those ankles that were injured a year ago. I am seeing him run with an intent and purpose every time he has the ball. Not if it's out of shotgun or if it's single back set or pistol, whatever it may be. He's running and hitting, hitting that hole a whole lot harder than he used to and getting those tough yards. And in a game with a defense that is as good, a defensive front that's as good as Michigan's, he's going to have to, hey, be comfortable only getting three yards one play. Be comfortable only, only getting five yep. yards. Next play, only getting three and a half. 
getting yep. four and a half. Why? Because eventually that might turn into 12 or 20 or 18 or 15. So he has to be able to stay comfortable just getting, you mentioned McCord. Hey, if you got to check it down or, or just take, get what's in front of you, do it. It's the same thing with Henderson. Keep your mind right and make sure that you're comfortable getting four yards a pop, five, one carry, three and a half another. Why? Because if you keep running, if he keeps running like he has been against this defense, he might pop one. Yeah, and that's the thing. That was one of my biggest notes I put about Henderson. Take the yards, any of the yards. Take positive yards wherever they're at. Keep keep things moving forward. Um, the, the overall thing you know, that they got to do, you have to cherish – got to have the football in your hands Man. to win this game whichever Man. team you have to have in your hands to win the game like it, it doesn't if it if it takes you you know three or four downs to get that first down got to get it you can't you know i always watch it every time you punt or every turnover to me i take i just i subtract three points i just subtract three points and if you get enough of those like you just can't come back from especially if you get late into this game and you got a michigan team that you we know can chew the clock because of their running game i think I think the Ohio State defense would be good. I can't wait to hear your show on a later this week. But like, when you're on offense, man, if you if you think it, don't don't overthink it, Ryan Day and whoever else involved. If you need four yards and you think Harrison on a slant is it, do it. Don't yes. don't go. Don't do anything silly. Get 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 four and a half. Get your first down. Live to play again. Don't put these kids under more pressure than they need to be by dumb play calling. And really. If if I look at all the play and, and the experts are starting, you know, you know, kind of agree with me too. If you really look at the play designs throughout the year, they've been sporadic. Um, they haven't all came together for one game, and a lot of it's because, again, the Ohio State like doesn't have to fight through every game that they play. But if you look at what they have at their disposal, they really have one of the most, you know unique you know offenses in the country like it's really they really do a lot of stuff you know and if they if they could possibly put that all together for one game they have a lot of great plays out there that cause a lot of trouble for the team so you know again we talked about these three guys they're going to be involved in each one of them one is going to make the other one better going to make the other one better and then you throw in that offensive line the offensive line just got to they just got to be mean yeah. and nasty yeah. and ready for the and ready for the fight um, you know, none of these. I think another advantage, just real quick, you might talk about this later in the week. Another thing that High State, I think, has the advantage. I think they're past emotion. I think they're past playing like, you know, I think they're past arguing and pushing and shoving. I think they're focused. I don't think they'll get caught up in, you know, late penalties and all that stuff. I think they are going up here on a business trip like they used to do rather than getting caught up in like the fist fight that 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 they've been drug into the last couple of years. And or I guess two years ago. Last year was a bit of an anomaly. It's still a weird game to me, but I, I don't think this team is going to get caught up pushing and shoving and emotional. I think they're up there on a business trip. Jeff, I didn't ask you this earlier, didn't ask you in a text, but I want to close this out because I have to save my prediction for later in the week on Friday's show. Of course. Do you think Ohio State beats Michigan? And if you have a score prediction, lay that out for us as well. I have one for you because you get me every year with it, and I really believe this. I really believe this year that Ohio State's going to beat Michigan for everything that we've talked about and everything Jay's going to talk about all week. Um, I it, It's it's one of these things. I always do this, Jay. Take the names off and look at the stats and look at everything you know. I feel like Ohio State is playing slightly better right now and and has you know has a lot of the emotional advantages too. So I think uh, 27-20 OSU. I, I – you know, I think I don't know when that last touchdown is going to be scored. <laughs> it might be early. It might be late and hanging on. But the defense is all we asked for was for a little better defense, and we got it. So I, I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite and say that, you know, we we still can't win. I, I think th there's something about this team that I think understands the job at hand after everything they went through last year. Jeff, I like where you think. I think the listeners and viewers do as well. <laughs> Jeff, did I recently see you come out of retirement and post another podcast? I did. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Jeff needs sport. Jeff needs sports is back. I, you know, right? Um, I because I threw out the first audio podcast last week. Of course, you all know if you listen to Jay's show that I never really retired, but right, my right. own show's back. So check out Jeff needs sports anywhere you can find podcasts. Doing a lot of college football stuff. A lot of a lot of fun stuff we're gonna do through the year. Maybe I'll be able to get a uh, grab Jay on here if he ever gets a spare moment uh, in the next twelve months. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, man, I would love to, guys. You can follow Jeff on X, formerly known as Twitter, at jhunt006. You can follow me on the same platform at jstevens07. The only reason I am reserving my prediction until Friday is because we got a few more days worth of shows before my prediction comes out. want to save that for the final show before the big game on Saturday. This has been Locked on Buckeyes here on a Tuesday. I'll see you next time.